Hi! Hi guys! Um, so, we just had a very important and exciting announcement uh, that we wanted to discuss. So, you probably saw the PR uh, by the uh, GLF um, and they announced a series of blockchain apps and infrastructures that they're starting to work with um, to form an architecture for telcos. And this is super exciting and myself and Asaf, Asaf kind of facilitated this process internally. Uh, for the past, how long have you been working on it? It's a half a year, six months. At, at yeah. least six months. Six months in serious discussions and even a little bit before that. Um, so I wanted Asaf to come and ask you some, and answer some of our questions about it. Uh, so first of all, what is the GLF? So the GLF is the Global Leaders Forum and it's a cross-industry organization for the telecom industry. Uh, that gather the leading organizations, uh, the leading companies in the telecom world, and some of them will be names everybody knows, such as Orange, Telefonica, NTT, uh, AT&T, Deutsche, Deutsche Telekom. Telekom. Uh, so, so, so what is a telecom? Can you give me an example of a telecom company in uh, Korea, for example? So a telecom company uh, is a company that facilitates communication uh, between people and organizations. It could be a company like SK Telecom, uh, Korea Telecom, KT, uh, that could be either providing a mobile services or a, or landline services like all of us used to use. So, so what are some of the telcos that are part of the GLF? So the GLF is really a global organization as I mentioned it's uh, 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 it has most of the uh, largest uh, telcos in the world AT&T from the US, British Telecom from the UK uh, Orange, which is a global operator, China Telecom, uh, NTT, as I mentioned, the biggest one in Japan, and many more. Verizon, I see. Verizon, yeah. Telstra, very big in, in uh, Southeast Asia and Australia. So, so, so what is this process that the GLF did, really? So the GLF were actually identified that blockchain could be important for the telecom industry uh, about two years ago and started piloting uh, in order to see whether it could help with the collaboration between telcos. They did a few pilots, uh, 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 recognized the initial uh, value of blockchain and decided to go on a full process to actually design the future blockchain infrastructure for the telecom industry. And, and when they, like, I, I saw in the PR that they did this process for 14 months. Yeah, so they did several pilots. Uh, for 14 months, uh, did quite a comprehensive work to identify some initial uh, areas where uh, blockchain can generate value with several uh, operators that participated. Um, and now they want to really create a framework around all this. So in, in the PR, they have mentioned several companies, several uh, both apps and infrastructures that they're planning to work with. So this very long due diligence process was with these solutions to see which solutions across the entire blockchain industry can bring the GLF value. And, and who are some of the companies in the list? So the ones who are going to participate, uh, some of them are uh, application uh, developers, so will be on the application side. Uh, companies such as um, Clear, Clear, Amarito, uh, CSG, a very big one. And some of them are blockchain infrastructure. And this is the exciting thing, because if you look at how many blockchain infrastructure companies are in the list, you will see that the list is actually very short. So let's go over the blockchain infrastructure providers in the list. Who are they? So we have a few. Um, you can mention uh, Consensus. Consensus are the guys working on Ethereum. Right. Okay. Uh, Who else? You can mention uh, IBM. Uh, IBM are the guys working on Hyperledger. Yeah, exactly. And you can mention R3. R3 uh -huh. are the guys working on Corda, if you're familiar. And of course... And that's it. And Orbs. Yeah. And us, which is super, super, super duper exciting because this is a very high society to be part of. Um, and I think it's also, you know, it's a great thing that the only infrastructure that was actually named in the PR is Orbs. Because R3 is Corda, but they did not mention the solution itself, Corda. IBM is actually Hyperledger, but they did not mention Hyperledger, and Consensus is Ethereum, but they did not mention Ethereum. Exactly. Only Orbs was mentioned as the infrastructure itself, and not as a system integrator that is pushing the infrastructure. And I think this is kind of a unique thing. Now, is there any other thing unique about these solutions providing to the GLF? Right. So, um, so I believe that, that 
what's interesting with the GLF that they really are looking for a future comprehensive infrastructure. So they're not looking just on what will happen tomorrow, but they're really looking to build an infrastructure for five, 10 years on. Uh, and that really relates to the Orbs vision, which, uh, which looks at a comprehensive infrastructure that can run multiple apps, different governance models, and, and really be flexible uh, and future looking. But, but, and if I'm looking at the list, if I look at consensus, uh, S, uh, R3 and uh, IBM, all of them usually work with permissioned blockchains. All of them are private blockchains. And Orbs is not a private blockchain. So why is Orbs, it's pretty much the only permissionless public infrastructure in the list. And this is insane. Like yeah. Orbs is the only public solution that provides infrastructure to this group. So exactly. you were part of this process. Can you tell me like what is the unique offering that they saw, that the GLF That's saw in a public blockchain? So yeah, I think that was a very important factor. And, and we did emphasize on our proposal uh, that this infrastructure should be built on a public blockchain. I think this and, is the main differentiator exactly. of Orbs relative and, to solutions like Hyperledger. And, and exactly, and I think that reflects, and we saw it on our discussion with the GLF, how uh, the Orb proposition for enterprise is unique. That we finally have a public blockchain that is uh, focused on this type of solution and can facilitate such uh, industry consortium. And I think the GLF realized that. Yeah, I think this is a very strong vote of confidence in the fact that the public permissionless blockchain has a lot of value for the enterprise and there is no more enterprise than the telco use case. Uh, so, so we mentioned use cases. Can you give me an example what sort of a blockchain use case they're trying to develop? Right. So, as I mentioned, this, this should be an open uh, infrastructure uh, uh, that, that is catered for different types of use cases. Uh, I think the first one that, that they are focused on, because that's the main focus of uh, collaboration between telcos, is uh, is about settlements. So settlements, uh, if I if I understand correctly, settlements is when, for example, I go overseas, uh, I go abroad, and I take my mobile phone with me, I make a call, and the local telco services me, but I pay my bill to my telco at home. So now you need to have a settlement between these two companies. And this is a collaboration problem, it's very expensive, blockchain can really help there. So this is one use case which is kind of financial. Can you give me an example use case that is not financial in nature? Right, so we have for example a collaboration around data and information. Uh, so uh, for example spam calls, uh, identify, identification and sharing of information of and spamming uh, telephone numbers. So, so if there is a robocaller, like an advertising company that keeps calling somebody, uh, there is value in being able to share this data across telcos because not, now not every telco has to identify this blacklist by themselves. And right now there is no good way to do this. And blockchain technology can facilitate this collaboration. So this is another good example. Um, and, and I personally like a lot the governance. There's also a governance use case that I personally very relate to strongly. And that is on-chain governance for a consortium of telcos because it's a group of how many companies are in these consortium? Right. So the, this is a, it's a very important point because currently 11 op operators, some of them are very big, uh, are uh, forming this consortium. But... Of course, there are hundreds and even thousands of potential members, and for that, governance become a real issue. Yeah, so imagine that you need to make a decision on how data is shared between these companies, and it, even making the decision between a dozen or a hundred companies is virtually impossible. And the only way to do this is with blockchain infrastructure, and this is a great use case, for example, for a public blockchain. Why? Because these decisions have to be transparent and auditable to all. So we believe in Orbs that almost all use cases here should run on a public blockchain. Why? Because if you can't audit it at home, it's worthless. It's kind of like doing it in the old days where you just had to trust somebody. The only way to reduce trust and remove it is create a trustless system where anyone could audit. And this is the idea of a public blockchain. Exactly. And I think we emphasize this point strongly in our proposals to the, to the GLF, that the fact that, and again, when consortium grows, you have smaller players that need to trust the system. Uh, and that's the way. That's the only way to do it. So this is a very exciting announcement. I think we'll see this moving forward and we'll keep you updated. Thank you, guys. Thank you.